Welcome to our continued study of what stewardship is. We're using the Stewardship Basics Bible Study, and you can find the link in the comments. I am Pastor Wright, and it is exciting to continue to look at what stewardship is and how it applies to our life. We're in Lesson 3, and in this study, or in this session, we will do the first three questions of Lesson 3. Three. So we begin with Genesis chapter 3, and as you know, this is when everything changes. God has created everything and said, this is very good, but then something happens. And we're going to read Genesis chapter 3, 1 through 7. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the, tr of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall we touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And so again, that's Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 7, which leads us to our first question. In what way did the serpent challenge the owner-steward relationship? And I think this is a great question because Adam and Eve have been given the gift to be stewards of God's good creation, the Garden of Eden. And we see with this question that the serpent asks Eve, did God really say? And then making mention, God knows you will be like him, knowing good and evil. It is in this statement that Eve is tempted to interpret God's word in a different way. Not the way that God has given it to Adam and Eve. Not the way that he intended and as we know, both Eve and Adam fall into this temptation. They take what is not theirs. They rebel against God. This can be coveting. This can be uh, the first commandment issue. You shall have no other gods. They did not listen to God's word. They listened to someone else's word. And they took matters literally into their own hands. And they took and they partook of the forbidden fruit. And they do this, and it is the challenge of ownership. Did God really say, did God really mean this? And this planted this false notion and understanding of the place Eve and Adam were to take, of stewards, caretakers, enjoying the promise, the gift, of the participation in God's good creation. And so I like that interesting statement that the serpent gave the possibility of a false interpretation of God's word. Well, then our second question, and uh, it's interesting. At what point did Eve fail in her role as steward? And the Bible study says, one could assert that the sin that indeed induced the first stewardship crisis was covetous. She wanted and desired, evil want and desire. Here is the essence of covenant. It is the attitude that says, I need something I do not now have in order to be happy. This was serious repercussions in the area of stewardship. Verse 26 is loaded with simple yet complete disasters. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, 
and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit and ate it, and she gave also to her husband who was with her who ate. It is in this verse that we see that she takes and gives to her husband, and they eat. The center of the structure is found in the taking. They took and partook of what is not theirs. The woman's covetousness is described in terminology that foreshadows the 10th commandment. The words of for delight and desirable are the root meaning to covet. I think that's fascinating. And again, she had this offer presented to her. Don't you want to be like God? God is holding out on you. And that want, this will make me happy. This will complete me. And I will take it into my own hands. And again, taking that which did not belong. A very rebellious act. And this moves us into question three. How was Adam complicit in this process of poor stewardship? Because again, we hear, and he was with her when the serpent was talking to Eve, when they were conversing about what God really said. The Bible says the woman does not bear the blame alone in this stewardship crisis. The text is clear that the man is right there with her. While the woman didn't make the first thoughts, words, and actions, it is clear that the man did not exercise his role in stewardship by stopping her. The man was not deceived. He simply took the fruit offered to him from his wife. The woman does not try to tempt the man. She simply gives and he takes. He neither challenges nor raises any questions. The woman allows her mind and her own judgment to be her guide. The man neither approves or rebukes. Hers is a sin of initiative. His is the sin of acquiescing. He forsakes his role. He just gives. But both are guilty of failing to exercise faithful dominion of stewardship, which the Lord had given them as they were created in his image to work and keep the garden. And I always like the idea that Adam was husband and he's there to protect Eve. He is there to be not only the husband, but the pastor. He knows God's word. God said, do not take of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For the day you do, you shall die. And he was to preach this to Eve. He knows the truth. But as we hear in the Bible study, he, no long, he did not rebuke and he did not ask questions. He just accepted. It's food. She gave it to me. But he was right there. And he was witness. And he's complicit in this too. So he fails at being a good steward. He doesn't take care of the gift of wife. He doesn't take the gift of creation. He doesn't take care of what has been given to him. God's word. And so we see, and I like what the Bible study says, the stewardship crisis. We see corruption entering into creation. And we see our first parents failing to uphold the dominion, the gift of dominion over creation. And they bring in the corruption. They bring in sin into the world. And today, this is why we're studying what stewardship is, to be reminded of the gift and what we get to participate in what God has given to us in this life and this creation. Well, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to, to reach out. My email is also in the comments. And I look forward to further discussions as we continue in this trek of stewardship. God's peace and blessings be upon you.